Mr. Jerry. Don't you think the gaps will wait for us? What's the matter, Fergie, old top? Well, sir, I'm a payment behind in my life insurance, and I'm not sure whether it's lapsed or not. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you won't die this time, Fergie. Oh, my nerves are in a frightful state. Oh, oh do be careful. I don't want to be a bit of Get along great. much. I was frightened to death. Oh, that's all right. I needed the exercise anyway. Oh, you're a chauffeur too. Well, I'm glad you chauffeurs don't stick together. <laughs> well, our chauffeurs usually do stick together. But not in a case like this. Excuse me. I hope you haven't lost your job. Your boss seems awfully angry when you jumped from the car. My boss? 
Oh, wasn't that your boss with you? Oh, oh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> yes. Why, uh, that wasn't much of a job anyway. See, the breakfasts were terrible. I'll tell you what. You come home with me. Mother will hire you to drive us. Well, that's a great idea. Oh. Yes, but since my job is gone, well, let's go see your mother. All right. See, my boss had a seagoing complex, and uh, he liked the nautical touch about everything. Uh, I'll get myself a regular uniform this afternoon when I pick up my clothes from the other place. All right. But you'll be back here at five, because I'll need you. Yes, ma'am. I don't think that young man has been a chauffeur very long. <laughs> Like a rough night on the ocean, Captain. Your car, sir. It's at the bottom of the cliff. A total wreck. <laughs> Good. I won't need it. I was going to buy a new front wheel job next week anyway. Fergie, I'm going away for a couple of weeks. Take care of yourself and take it easy. And don't overfeed the pups. Fergie, I'm going out in search of adventure and romance. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. 
One less to split with. Bettina, Sally is a wonderful girl, and you should be proud of her. I am proud of her. She's everything I've wanted to be myself. I can't imagine you having to apologize for anything. Bettina, why can't we be married now? Don't keep me waiting any longer. Haven't I been patient? Oh, William, you're a dear. And I'm awfully fond of you. But it's utterly impossible for me to marry anyone. But why? Sally's grown now and doesn't require so much of your time. Oh, just a minute, Sally. Lena will answer the door. I'm the new chauffeur. I know it. I'm to show you to your room. It's right next to mine. Mm. What a break. <laughs> your mother had better watch out, Sally, or you'll be calling me Papa yet. <laughs> this is the 47th time that I have asked her to change her name to Baxter. Well, Captain? I'll use all of my influence. Okay, Sally. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Sally. Goodbye, Captain. Mother, I think he's a piece. Why don't you give him a break? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Moore, ain't he grand? Yes, Lena. Captain Baxter is a wonderful man. Oh, well, I didn't mean Captain Baxter. I meant the new chauffeur. So elegant. He was even polite to me. Oh, Lena. Yes, ma'am? I'm home to no one. Oh, Mrs. Moore. It's a Mr. Joe Fall. He insists on seeing you. He says he knows you're home. Very well. Show him in. I must see this Mr. Pauly. He's an old acquaintance. Run along and get this here. All right. <laughs> Gina, you're a sight for sore eyes. Thanks, Joe. What do you want? The cinch, this is not just a social call. Well, maybe not. But you'd do better to be more friendly. 
What Joe Farley wants, he gets. That bank robbery up north of Race Such a Stink was pulled by my outfit. They're due here tonight. Now get this. I'm hijacking them for that dough. And I'm cutting you in on it. What we gotta do is hide them out a couple of days. You forget you've been in the big house a long time, Joe. I don't run a crook's boarding house anymore, nor do I mix with them. I'm in the nightclub business now, and I'm strictly on the up and up. Do you get that? Don't try to hi-hat me, Brett. You wasn't always so particular. You're in this deal whether you like it or not. Maybe I haven't always been so particular, Joe. But I don't like it, and I'm not in this deal. How do you like hearing that Jim Moore's the leader of that gang? How would that look in the papers? The arrest of Bettina Moore's husband. Ex-convict. Robber. Murderer. You're lying! You know Jim has been dead ten years. Oh, yeah? That's what you thought. Those were the ten years he spent with me and Folsom. Laugh that off. How would that swell kid of yours like to know about that? Her father, a two-time loser. Well, I had hoped that the, you'd do this like the clever little girl you used to be. If you want me to make a tough for you, I can. Now listen. Those birds are due in on the 945 tonight. I have arranged to meet them in the back room of your nightclub. From there, you'll arrange to bring them here and keep them undercover until I get my hands on their dough. Understand? All right, Joe. I know when I'm licked. But if any of you dirty rats double cross me and bring disgrace on my little girl, I won't stop until I put every one of you on the spot. And you know I mean it. I know you do it, kid. See you tonight. I guess I should apologize for overhearing your conversation. But I heard a threatening voice, and you and Miss Sally here alone. You see, I've never been lucky enough to have a sister or mother to look after.
We think we'll work. It sounds slick to me. Can you give the signal that Farley and his gang are in here? The tiger will start a battle in there. Not me, boy. This drive, me boy started. I finish it. <laughs> then the tiger calls the cops. We see that the eggs don't get out of this back room. There are sense to get picked up when the cops get here. And that puts you in the clear, boy. Mum's the word. Let's take with me, tiger. I can bank on you. I'm in a spot. Yeah, and you'll, ha you'll have troubles on this deal too, boy. There'll be fines to pay. Oh. <laughs> What is, Joe? A double cross? Don't sound much. 
Okay, Joe. But I'm taking no chances. Float. What's that back door? Yes, sir. Squad cars seven and nine. Squad cars seven and nine. Squad cars seven and nine. Hold up, Blue Moon Cafe. Hold up, Blue Moon Cafe. Hold up. Blue Moon Nightclub. Let's go. Blue Moon Nightclub. Let's go. Tina, so you with Farley's mob now. Get this straight, Jim. I'm not with any mob. I was forced into this hideout act, and I'm doing it to save Sally. The kid. How is she, Betty? I'd like to see her. What's it to you? She thinks you're dead. You are. To her. Now get this, Jim Moore. You try to open up to her, I'll kill you with my own hands. And I'll laugh while I'm doing it. Franklin Court. Quick! Put down a gun. Put down a gun. I'm in the know. I'm the driver for Mrs. Moore, the Queen Bee. We'll take a chance on you. But what you said. We can soon find out when we get there. Hurry up. Beat it. And step on it. Step on it. 
back room. You boys stay here. Come on with me. during the fight. Keep a couple of the boys here. I'm going over to see if Mrs. Moore is all right. All right, Captain. Sally, these gentlemen are waiting to see your mother. Well, well, so you're Betty's little girl. My old friend Betty's little girl. All grown up and everything. Telephone mother and find out when she wants a car. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you be a nice little girl and entertain us until your mother comes back? Finally. Deal up to your old tricks, eh, Farley? But lay off this kid, you understand? And those awful looking men. Why don't you tell me what it's all about? Well, there's nothing I dare tell you, Sally, or I would. Jerry, 
Don't you trust me? Oh, sure I do. But this mix-up is too much for a girl like you. Betty. Oh, my dear. You're hurt. Oh, it's nothing. It's just a scratch. And I wouldn't have it fixed until I was sure that you were all right. If you don't mind, I'll go upstairs and clean up a little bit. Oh, no. Let me take care of you. All right. How does that happen? Well, I dropped in at your club. I found that you were gone. There was a, I got in the sort of a jam and got hit with a bottle. You stay right there. Don't you dare move. Okay. I'll be right Gee, back. Gee, this is great. I do trust you, Jerry. And I'll do anything you say. All right, then. You're going to marry me so I can take you away from all this trouble. You know, I'd take a sock in the head every day in the week for this. If I get another one tonight, I'll be back. Thanks, Betty. Goodbye, dear. I've got to be getting along. Good night, William. Good night. Mother, dear. Jerry has something to say to you. Oh, yes, Mrs. Moore. Sally and I have decided to get married. I want to take care of her. What a brilliant idea it is. Too bad it won't work. So you want to take care of Sally on a chauffeur salary. Why, you couldn't take care of yourself if you didn't get room and board. It's true, my salary is small, but... Uh... But, Mother, I love him. And I wouldn't care if he didn't have a nickel. We could get along. Oh, what nonsense. I have other plans for my daughter. Let's hear no more about it. Tomorrow you'll realize how foolish you are. Watch the house from that side. Yes. And you boys from over there. Yes, sir. Hello, William. How's the head? Why, what's the matter? Why so serious? Bettina, headquarters is not satisfied with the report about that mix-up at your place last night. The men responsible for that bank job at Magnolia, were seen leaving your club in a car registered to you and are believed to have come here. Why, William, you're not accusing me of a tie up with that kind of a mob, are you? My car is in the garage. You are certainly welcome to search the house. I know you don't know anything about it, dear. But the chief wants to talk to that chauffeur of yours. Where is he? He's not in just now. Oh, how silly this all is. He's just a nice boy. I'm sorry, but... My orders are to bring him in. Where is he? I guess I'm the man you're looking for. Then you'd better come along. And if you're on the square, you won't have any trouble proving it. Come on, Betty.
I've got to get you out of this. This is too much of a mess for me. Then what can we do? We'll get married right away. All right. Oh. I'll meet you at the little church parsonage. I'll be waiting there for you. No, I haven't seen him. Well, come on, let's get back to the house. You rat. You didn't believe me, did you? I told you to keep you dirty hands off my little girl. I'll do one decent thing in my life, and that's to keep you from ever touching her again. What's eating you, Jim? I wasn't gonna hurt your brat. lie to me, you rat. I know you, Fowley. If it had not been for you, I'd now be a respectable man living with my wife and child, instead of a two-time loser, a crook like yourself. So I'm a dirty crook, am I? Yes. And here is for you and I, part company. Put down that knife, slug. Did I get him? Bobby. You've killed him. Well, I ain't sorry. Listen, kid. This is my finish, too. Before I go, I want to return a favor you once did me. You remember the time when you hit me from the cops? You didn't know I was a crook then. But listen. I've been tipped off. You're in love with that cop Baxter. Get him on the phone. And have him beat it here. 
have something to tell them before I pass on. Quick, phone them. Oh. I yeah. didn't think I'd ever get here. Gus, I'm glad you made it, honey. Oh. Police department, quick. Hello. Yes, Bettina, dear. All right, dear, I'll be right over. Well, the certificate looks all right, but where are your witnesses? Witnesses? Yeah, I didn't know you had to bring your own witnesses. Well, it is customary for marrying couples to have their own witnesses. Well, you see, we've never been married before. Well, you wait here, and I'll go out and see if I can find someone. All right. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't either. <laughs> Gosh, I hope you can find somebody. Oh, gentlemen, uh, please. <laughs> you thought you got away from me, didn't you, kid? Oh, no. <laughs> step right back here into your position, please. You don't mind waiting a minute? Sure, take your time. I'm so glad you came. Where are they? They're in there, quick. Just a minute here, buddy. Come on. And I'm telling you the truth. So help me. Don't worry, dear. Farley cleaned up everything before he kicked off. I'm not worrying. I'm just too happy. Here he is, Pat. The other egg is in the wagon outside. Take those bracelets off. This case is closed. Yes, sir. Thanks. All right, boys. Yes, sir. Oh, Mother, I'm so happy. Gary and I are married. Congratulations, Mr. Jerry Coleman. Oh. Why didn't you tell us who you were in the first place? Well, how'd you find out? Look. 